Hello, hi. This is Thekla Petridou, a Cypriot psychologist and an author, and this is the most recent video in English on my YouTube channel. I am supposed to deliver a video in English every Friday, but since the coronavirus pandemic, I have failed to do so. And again, I, uh, I ask you to excuse me for not delivering as promised. I hope that in the near future, I will be able every Friday at 1 p.m. Cyprus time or um, 11 p.m. UK time, I will be able to deliver a video in English. Today's subject is a theoretical one. Beware of con artists and love scammers. Um, the term corn artist is used to describe somebody who uses um, a manifestation and grooming in order to attract either a female or a male person to indulge into a romantic or so-called romantic relationship with him or her in order to take advantage of them. Um, being um, groomed by a con artist or, or a love scammer can be very dangerous, especially for people who are in, in a point in their lives that they feel unloved or they feel vulnerable or susceptible to flirting. Flirting is good. When you are a single person and somebody flirts you, you feel that you are attractive, you feel that you, you are desirable by other people, and maybe your self-esteem goes a little bit higher. But flirting can be very dangerous if used as a technique to groom a victim by a con artist or a love scammer. To set things straight, I'm not going to talk about love scammers who reside in a third world country. Usually, um, some African countries uh, like Ghana or um, there's another one. Uh, I can't remember now the name. There are some African countries that uh, have this, um, have a lot of con artists uh, residing there and it's a kind of a job and they started with email scams all of you must have received at one point in your life an email claiming that i am i'm that person and i come from this african country and i, I have this money that i cannot take out of my bank account unless i have some help from somebody who's a foreigner so i ask for you to give me your bank details in order to to be able to to take this money out and of course you give them your <laughs> your bank account details or your card your credit card or debit card details and they steal money from you this is uh, a very old um, um, scam that most people nowadays are able to recognize from the beginning but there was a time like 15 or 20 years ago that you could count many victims from Western countries, uh, especially. Um, scammer, uh, love scammers or con artists are not essentially someone from a third world country with a very low socioeconomic status that they try to take advantage of ignorant people who search the internet or use social media or dating apps without having uh, enough uh, knowledge about how to use them uh, without being um, seduced by an artist. I remember the countries Nigeria. Nigeria and Ghana are some of the African countries that usually um, uh, con artists come from these countries. This doesn't mean that every Nigerian is a con artist or every, every person from Ghana is a con artist. 
We just heard about the stories. If you're interested, there are many documentaries on the subject. Uh, I follow this uh, channel in Australia, 60 Minutes Australia, and they have some real life documentaries uh, documenting how these people work in Africa, that they all are a group and they go into internet cafes and one person might be posing online as a female or a male and they might have multiple um, love affairs uh, from um, online with people from US, Australia or any other countries and what they do is they drain their victims of money. I'm not going to talk about this today because there are so many well-documented stories online that you can uh, watch and I, I've already mentioned uh, the 60 Minutes Australia uh, um, documentaries on the issue. I'm going to talk about your everyday con artist, your everyday love sc- scammer, that man or that woman who enter your life and they make you fly. They, they know how to flirt you. They know how to say the right words to move you, to make you trust them, to make you feel special. To make to swipe your, your off your feet as you say, as it said, to make you feel, oh, my life is different. Somebody has noticed me. Somebody knows that I'm here. Somebody, a man or a woman, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to a heterosexual male, to a heterosexual female, to a homosexual male, a homosexual me, female, and so on. It's very difficult nowadays to be able to know and distinguish from the beginning. Who, which person that comes near us and flirts us has good intentions. And the reason is obvious. It's because we live in the time of um, internet connection and we are. it is so easy to talk with somebody who lives across the globe. In the old years, people used to marry locally. They used to marry somebody from their village or their county. And usually they knew about the, that person's roots and that person's history. And they had some chance to be more accurate, to have a more accurate choice. Nowadays that you meet somebody online, let's be honest here. And let's be cl- clear that most of our new meetings are online. And that's the reality. And I love it. I love online reality. I love the fact that now... I make this video and you are able to watch it across across the globe. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. But it's also dangerous in some aspects. There are some dangers in modern life dating. Of course, there have been many dangers in uh, old times matchmaking. So I'm not suggesting here to go backwards and stop flirting and stop dating and become um, a nun or a monk. Not I'm, or a celibate person to go for celibacy. I'm not just suggesting that. I'm just suggesting that we should know some stuff and be uh, cautious, cautious enough in order not to fall for somebody who doesn't really love us, who doesn't really care about us or our feelings, but uses us for profit. That profit might be the obvious profit, the financial profit. If you are a person of some financial statute, if you have uh, financial stability, if you have your own house, if you have your own car, if you have a job that, that you get paid, if you live a good life, and living a good life is something that it doesn't have so much to do with how much money you gain, but how you use your money. If, you're, if you are somebody who use your money, if you are somebody who know how to live, who buys good food for their bodies, <laughs> I mean, who like, to, who like fresh food, fresh vegetables, organic food, for example, or whole foods, somebody who takes care of their external and internal appearance, somebody who would use their money on charity, who would use their money on improving themselves or improving their house or improving their uh, quality of life. And these kind of people who spend money that not necessarily have so much money or have more money than people who are stingy and they do not, they do not spend this money. And usually con artists, they, get, uh, they, they don't get it. They, find, they, 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 they meet somebody who knows how to spend money in order to make their lives better. They think, oh, she spends money, he spends money, so he has money. Spending, it's not the same as having money. Okay, 
I do not approve of the behavior of indulging in spending money from credit cards or loans. That's not what I'm suggesting. But some people, they spend all their salary or all their income on improving their life and they are not stingy at all and they don't have any money at the bank. And some other people have lots of money at the bank, but they do not spend anything. So they appear to be poor, but they're not. Anyhow, if you have some uh, financial appearance <laughs> that might attract um, scammers, love scammers and con artists, you should be aware when somebody approaches you. How on earth did they try to flirt you? How did they learn about you? If you are not on an online dating site, if you are just on social media, if you are just on Facebook or on Instagram, if somebody tries to send a message who doesn't know you in real life, who might not live in the same area like you, or in the same country, even, or in the same continent, why on earth would they contact you? If you are on a dating site, okay, you, are, you have a profile on a dating site, on a dating app, it means that you put yourself out there in order to meet new people. And even on that situation, especially on dating sites and dating apps, a lot of scammers make pro free profiles there. Some even might invest in their future and have a paid profile, a pro profile. So you should be double, double cautious when somebody approaches you uh, without you approaching them mm -hmm, and tries to um, uh, swipe your, your feet and tell you, you're so beautiful, you're, you're such, a, such a female woman or you're such a gentleman or I love your bone structure or I like your style or you seem to be very compatible with me. What's, what's your star sign? And all this uh, stuff that people use when they flirt. One rule is that professional flirters, con artists, or love spammers, they know how to use the right words. They are impeccable in their flirting technique. They say all the positive things about you. They try to learn a lot of things about your life and they do not say anything about theirs. Yes, love scammers do not reveal too much information about them. Because if you learn more information about them, you will find out that they, have, they are con artists, actually, and that they have taken advantage of other people in the past. Because somebody, anybody, wouldn't become a con artist or a, vasc or a love scammer because he saw your picture online. <laughs> he, he or she has been doing that, has been doing that for years. It's not the first attempt. So, scam artists, uh, con artists, or uh, love scammers, they won't say too many things about, too much, too much info about them. They won't relieve too much information about them, only the basics. And they will try to learn too many things about you. Don't get flattered. If they ask too many things about your life, don't get flattered. It's dangerous. It's very possible that they want to find about your uh, weaknesses and strengths, about what you like and, and what you dislike in order to to manage to behave accordingly to your needs and your desires in order for you to fall for them. So be cautious, be extra cautious, be aware. If somebody comes on the first date and they don't say anything about themselves, and if you ask them stuff, they say, oh, that's a personal question. Give me a break. If you want to have a personal relationship with me, you are going to ask, you are going to answer all my personal questions Unless, if you don't want to answer them, don't try to form a personal relationship with me. That's the right approach to sc love scammers and con artists. You ask for information. You ask for confirmation. Show me your passport. Show me your ID. Show me that you actually do the work you say you do. Let's meet some of your friends. Try to learn information about the person who is approaching you, the person who is flirting you, who, who dates you, in order to be more sure that this is a real person and not a persona that this person has created in order to take advantage of you. Not all con artists are so clever in order to 
to be impeccable in their flirting. Some of them, they are much cleverer. And they also make mistakes on purpose. One day they show that they have good attitude and another day they're down and they have emotional trauma from the past and they have this story that somebody gave up on them or their ex-wife or their ex-husband, they cheated on them and they're so vulnerable and they're so sad and they need you to take care of them or they wouldn't like to bother you with their issues. So they make you feel sorry for them, get interested in them, see a, a vulnerable side which is factitious or fictitious, I think fictitious is the word, which is not true, it's a story they make, so that you feel sorry for them, and while you feel sorry for them, you get more connected to them. And usually, con artists and love scammers, they want you to take care of them, they want to, they make an appeal to your maternal or paternal instincts. Oh, I'm such a, a miserable person, my mama didn't love me, would you love me? Oh, I'm so vulnerable. My dad didn't love me. Would you love me? Beware of people who have unfinished issues with their family relationships. And one crucial question to ask a, pot a potential partner who tries to flirt you or date you is this. Have you ever been to therapy? If not, would you ever be on therapy? Where are you to form a relationship with me or anybody else? When we, and you have problems, would you consider therapy or are you against therapy? Con artists and love scammers usually are against therapist, therapy. But even if they go to therapy, they don't do therapy. They do mock theory. Like mock trial, they do mock therapy. They don't say the truth. I've read this article online about 15 years ago and it was written by Dr. Ruth's daughter, you know, Dr. Ruth, the famous sexologist in the US. And she's, um, she's um, a writer and she wrote this article on CNN, on CNN page, a site, uh, on what to, what to notice on the first date, Some, uh, about the advice her mother gave her on what to look for on a first blind date. And one of the questions was, have you ever been to therapy? If not, would you? And Dr. Ruhr advised her daughter that if you meet somebody who has never been to therapy and he's totally against therapy and psychologists and therapists, get away. Run. Run as fast as you can. Because in our times, we do not have any social construction to help uh, people in dysfunctional relationships. I mean, we're not so close to church. We don't have our pastors or our priests. We don't have our spiritual guides and we, as we used to have like 50 years ago. And therapists are the people in modern age that can be used as peace bringers and somebody to help you make, um, make um, a meaning out of what's happening in your relationship. And if somebody is abusive and he has an intention of, uh, of uh, making a relationship with you in order to gain from you financially, emotionally, spiritually, energetically. If he has this, if he or she has this cause, a psychologist or a therapist will unveil them. So they are against therapists, they are against psychologists, they are against psychology in general. They do not think that, they do not believe that psychology is a science and they tend to make a mockery of people who follow psychologists like me on social media or on YouTube or people or, or books about uh, love relationships, psychology books or psycho, psycho educational um, seminars, workshops or whatever. They make a mockery of them because it's not good for them. If a con artist or, leva, or a love scammer goes near a therapist or a psychologist, they can get them. I can get them. I can get them, not for me, <laughs> for my client. In the last two years, I stopped seeing people in my private office in Cyprus. I make videos on YouTube in Greek on a daily basis and I also write books. And some of my books are about love relationships. And the, the next book I'm writing in Greek is about love relationships as well. My books have not been translated to English yet, but I, I really do hope that they will one day. 
and uh, uh, I've worked many years, 20 years with clients and all of the time when a couple came to me and either the man or the woman, either the one partner or the other were con artists, I could tell. I couldn't tell on my own personal <laughs> private life because you can't tell for yourself because when you have subjective feelings about somebody, you cannot judge them. But if you have any worries that your partner might be taking advantage of you, rush with him or with her to therapy. Beware of con artists and love scammers. They will sell you love, but what they will actually do is rob you of your money, of your feelings, of your dignity, of your serenity in your life, and they will make you feel worthless. And then you get into a, a vicious circle where you feel in love with somebody who's abusing you, with somebody who does not respect you, with somebody who doesn't have a good opinion about you, with somebody who is manipulative enough to gain money, attention, time, energy, everything from you. Con artists and love scammers drain you, drain you out of energy, drain you out of feelings, and they make you feel worthless. And you might not even realize, you might feel in love, you might feel happy, you might try all the time, try. Try to um, uh, mend your relationship, try to make your relationship better. Jen, you can read books, watch videos like this, self-help videos, or do stuff in order to improve the relationship, but you cannot improve it because there is not a relationship there. You are in a relationship with a fantasy because the other person is not there with you. The other person is there in order to derive money, energy, feelings, anything from you, but not to give you something, just to suck from your blood. Uh, con artists and love scammers are parasites. They are parasites and they stuck on your skin and they they take away your very soul. So if you're watching this video and you might think that you might be in a relationship with a con artist or a love scammer, I strongly advise you to visit a therapist of your choice, either online or in person, and try to drag your partner there. Because as soon as somebody enters a therapist's office with their, uh, uh, with their partner and they start talking in front of a therapist, the therapist can tell she or he is a scam artist, is a, is a con artist, is a love scammer. He or she doesn't love you. He or she are with you in order to derive benefits from you. They are with you because they want to take advantage with you, not because they love you. And sadly, many cases of people um, resolving in therapy, uh, refu uh, that, that try to find solutions for their problems in therapy, usually are couples, not all of them, most of them, a lot of them, are couples that the one person is in love with the other person and they really believe and feel that they have a real relationship and the other person is just there in order to take advantage. So beware, beware. On another video in the future, we might talk about positive signs at the beginning of a relationship that show that somebody is real and is there for true. Just a, a, a little spoiler, somebody who is real and for real, they have patience and they can wait. And they do not rush you into to take quick decisions. They don't come into your life like the wind, take everything and go away like a ghost. This is um, what I use in, in Greek in order to describe ghosting. Ghosting is when somebody invades your life like um, animals. Animals in Greek is uh, wind, like the wind, takes everything away and then they disappear as a ghost. Let's say no to con artists and love scammers. This is Tecla Petridou, Greek Cypriot psychologist and author. If you liked my video, please like, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel and i will try my best in order to deliver every friday a new video in english love you bye